Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS, and in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing cross section interpolation. All right, what do we have here in the geometric um, data screen? The geometric data editor is a river reach with two cross sections one is at uh, station zero, and the other is at station 200. The motivation behind a cross section interpolation is it's a quick and easy way to create additional cross sections that are in between known cross section locations. So, for instance, I know the cross section data at stations 0 and 200, and I also know that the terrain of the river channel is for the most part linear, it transitions linearly from one station to the other. And that's why this would be a good candidate location for adding interpolated cross sections. The more cross sections, the smoother the flow, and the more accurate the calculations can be made relating to energy grade line, friction losses, and contraction and expansion losses. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's actually start by looking at the cross section data for station 0 and station 200. I'll click here on the cross sections button. And as you see, we have our stations from 0 up to 100, and then the elevation values from 32 up to 92. This is for station 200. If I go down to station 0, it's the same stationing here across the cross section, but 2 feet below. So in 200 feet of run, the river reach decreases 2 feet. As you notice, the shape of the cross section is identical. So all I've done here is created a new cross section at station 200, and then increase the elevation by two feet. The user manual mentions three separate methods to create intermediate cross sections. The first is to do it manually by just creating a copy of a cross section and then modifying the elevation and station data. data. And then the other two options we'll also look at involve using the tools cross section option here in the geometric data editor. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the first option, the manual add. So what I have here is I'm going to create a copy of my station, my cross section here at station zero, and I'm going to put it in the middle between station zero and river station 200, which will be at river station 100. To do that, I'll select the river station zero, which is the one that's already selected, and then I'll come up to options, copy current cross section. Okay. Now from here, I'm, I need to select the river and the reach. I only have one river and one reach. And then for river station right here, I'm going to say 100. All right, so that's created my river station cross section at river station 100. And now what I've done is the elevation is exactly the same and same with the stationing as it is at the river station zero. But what I wanna do is keep the stationing the same but increase the elevation by one foot. So if I go down to zero, my invert here is at 30. And then if I go up to station 100, the invert is still 30. And then if I go up to a uh, cross section at river station 200, the invert is 32. So I wanna change that cross section at river 100, the invert to be um, one, uh, 31. And I wanna increase all the elevation by one. So I'll go up to option, adjust elevation. And now I have the option to add or subtract a constant value. So I'm just gonna say one there click OK, and now all the values have been updated. Oops, no, just, I'm sorry, just the values that I highlighted were updated. Okay, so I'm not going to select any particular value, which is how it will apply to all the values. Options, adjust elevation, again, click one, and then OK, and there we go, that's what I was expecting to see. So all the elevations have now increased by one. I'll click apply data, and then if I close this cross-section de data editor, and then I go ahead and save uh, the geom geometric data. Now I have a cross section here at 200 and a cross section here at 100 uh, river station. I'm going to go back to my cross sections. And one more thing I need to do is set the distance downstream to be 100 each. Because for 200, let's see. Yeah, that's set to 200. So let me change that to 100, 100, 100, and then apply. and then. Uh, the downstream reach length here would be 100, 100, and 100, and apply. Okay, and now we see the three cross sections uh, for the river reach at station 0, 100, and 200 right there. 
All right, so that was the FERC way. That was the manual way of interpolating cross sections by kind of adding it and doing the uh, the calculations yourself. Uh, besides adjusting the elevation, another option is to adjust the station. So you can select your cross section, adjust the station, and then multiply it by a factor or add a constant, which can also be a negative value, just to um, manipulate the stationing of the cross section across that river station. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete this cross section here at station 100. I'll go up to options and then delete cross section and then click OK and then OK. And then the diagram should update when I close that. OK, that looks good. Cross section. Now this updated back to 200, so that's good. All right, now we're going to talk about the two automated ways, the automated methods to adding cross intermediate cross sections or interpolated cross sections between two known cross-section data. So both of those methods involve going up to the tools menu of the geometric data editor. And then this first option here, cross-section interpolation, we have two options, within a reach and between two cross-sections. So let's talk about within a reach first. This will be the second overall option. And then what it does is it brings up this dialog box where we're gonna select the river, we're gonna select the reach. We only have one river and one reach here. And then we select the upstream and downstream river stations. So that's obviously a, a very easy and trivial uh, situation for us. We have two cross sections. Next, we specify the distance um, between the cross sections, the maximum distance. So right now we have 200 feet. But say, for instance, we wanted a cross section every 50 feet. And we'd go ahead and just type in 50 feet right here. And it would give us a cross section at... River station 50, 100, and 150. So there'd be three intermediate cross sections that it interpolates and creates along with the original uh, 0 and 200. The cut line GIS coordinates box allows the user to specify uh, either a linear interpolate cut line. This first method here simply draws straight lines between the two cross sections and interpolates the cross section coordinates based on the main channel distance. And then this second option here, generate for display as perpendicular segments. This method scales the cross section along the river reach invert line. A perpendicular segment across the river reach is drawn for the main channel. However, the overbanks are based on average slope of the invert line upstream and downstream from the point of intersection. I'm going to select this first option here. And then lastly, we need to specify the number of decimal points, so the precision of the stationing and the elevation. I'm just going to go ahead and use a point, you know, one decimal place. So if it's feet, this is to the nearest tenth of a foot. I think that's precise enough. And then delete and create. So let's go ahead and interpolate those cross sections. I'll click this button. Those three new cross sections were just created. We don't see it on the display until we click close. And then boom, here they are. We have our new three interpolated cross sections at river station 50, 100, and 150. We can look at that data by clicking on the cross section data. And now we have uh, 0, 50, 100, 150, and 200. So we have all the data for that right here. As you can see, it's a linear interpolation if you just look at the numbers and do the math. Also, you probably noticed that there is an asterisk right here, which is printed out everywhere the river station for that cross section is displayed. So the user knows which cross sections were actually measured and inputted, and then which of them like these three here were interpolated. Okay, so we see the asterisk right here. We also see the asterisk on the uh, plan view of the geometric data display. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those. So to do that, go up to tools, cross section within a reach, and then just click delete interpolated cross sections and close and they're gone all right the third and final way to create interpolated cross sections between your known cross sections is to go up to tools uh, cross section interpolation between two cross sections okay this is a similar but still different method as we just saw so we select the river we select the reach then we select the upstream river station and downstream river station then down below what we see is a cross section so this lower cross section is the cross section at river station zero, this black line right here. And then the black line on top of that is the cross section at river station 200. This third method of between two cross sections allows the user to have much greater control over how the interpolation is performed. 
Now, this particular example here, mine is a, almost a little bit too, too trivial to demonstrate the power of this method, but I'll go ahead and finish it off anyway. Again, we have the number of decimal places right here, and then the maximum distance. Let's go ahead and say the maximum distance is now 20. That way we'll have a cross section every 20 feet, which may be overkill, but let's just see what happens. And then we have the same cut line GIS coordinates as the previous option. We should probably also mention we have buttons here to add chords. This interpolation method is based on a string model that consists of chords that connect the coordinates of the upstream and downstream cross sections. These chords are classified as master and minor chords. So for instance, if you had a specific feature in the upstream segment that matched with a specific feature in the downstream segment or cross section, then you could use these chords to make that specification. And I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. But right here, the chords matched up perfectly. So there's really no need for me to add additional chords. I could add chords though by clicking on the add chords button and then just drawing in additional chords like right here and right here. But that's actually not needed because this is such a simple cross section the uh, HECRAS won't have any troubles. So I can delete those chords just as easily by clicking the delete button and good to go. All right, let me go ahead and click the interpolation button. Now I see a preview of every 20 feet and it looks perfect because again, this is a very trivial case. So if I click close, now I see those additional cross sections that have been added on every 20 feet of River Station. All right, so we can go back to tools, cross section interpolation, between two cross sections and delete them just as before and boom, they are gone. The user manual has this example here where for instance, if I had a specific main channel, that looks like it, it worked fine. But say for instance, I had a specific upcrop right here in the cross section, which should match with this upcrop cross section right here for um, cross section at River Station 10 and 11 based on uh, what I'm seeing up here. So if you let heck raz draw in the chords automatically, you may get a situation like this, or if there's no chords drawn at all, where this particular peak in the terrain gets leveled out, and then this next peak in the terrain sort of builds up, when what we really want to do is connect those two peaks. So using the chords by clicking on the chord button and then drawing those chords across, that's what we see in the next screen right here. Exactly. So these chords were drawn across, so you'd probably use four different chords in that situation. And then when you click the interpolate button, you get the cross sections that are drawn appropriately, as you can see here. So anyway, this is a little bit more in-depth example that the user manual provides, but it also demonstrates the purpose of this third and final method of using cross sections between two cross sections as an option. Okay. So that was it for this lesson. We talked about uh, having cross sections and adding interpolated cross sections in between our known cross section data in a way to make the model more accurate, save time. But it's also important to understand that not every cross section varies linearly. So you may need to include a few additional measured cross sections instead of using linear interpolation if necessary.